At the beginning of a Westwood service, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so. A Miskwichi Waskahican, the Cree name for Edmonton, meaning Beaver Hills House or Lodge in Cree, is Treaty 6 territory and home of the Métis Nation. It's the traditional home of diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. If you are here from a different region, please type your area's land acknowledgement in the chat as we continue ours. Land acknowledgements are a beginning, a way to respectfully draw attention to the journey of reconciliation in this place and within ourselves. But a simple land acknowledgement is not enough to bring about reconciliation and decolonization. There is more work to do. Wherever we are, we have the opportunity to get personal and ask ourselves, what can I do with my agency, my unique gifts, and my access to various forms of power to be in better relationship to the land and its original peoples. Every day is a practice. We try and try again in a way that's personal for each of us. With respect and gratitude, we begin with a call to land liberation. I was raised by the land between rolling hills and hospitals with the sound of wind blowing through wheat fields and midnight trains as my night lullaby. I'm a white settler on stolen land and have been prioritizing putting energy into educating myself on what that means and how to reconcile that relationship of harm. My childhood was spent on Treaty 4 territory. My parents' friends from the reserves would joke about their annual $5 from the queen. And I often fell asleep to the sound of drumming in our backyard where my dad and our family friend, Dougie Severite, who was a Plains Cree medicine man, would erect teepees and hold ceremony. Dad, Dougie taught my dad how to find the straightest poles for the teepees, how to make drums with respect to the animals who gifted their hides, and how to speak to the ancestors in sweat ceremonies. The racism in town was, was and still is thick enough to cut with a knife, but in our little village, my parents worked hard to build bridges and raised me to respect the sacred in all forms and faiths. I give thanks, as an Anishinaabe elder taught me, for the waters of this world, for the first peoples who are the tree nation, for the four-legged and the two-legged nations, for the peoples that crawl, the peoples that swim, and the peoples that fly in the sky. I give thanks for the teachings of the elders that I've been blessed to be in relationship with as I work to uplift the truth of the harm that has been done the indigenous peoples of this place, to heal my own relationship with all peoples of this land and to assist in bringing reconciliation into our communities in all the ways that I'm able. May we journey together in this spirit. I've lived within Treaty 6 territory and the home of the Métis Nation for most of the past 33 years across the places we know as Saskatchewan and Alberta. I wasn't born here. But Saskatoon, for example, was the first location where I ever felt a sense of place, a sense of belonging to the land. Arriving there for a visit, full moon reflecting on the river, I knew I was home. I had only known that feeling in connection to people before that moment. And then suddenly that feeling was also connected to those gentle hills and to the flowing water of the South Saskatchewan River. I learned later that I had a grandma who grew up in Saskatchewan, Aww. not far away from there. Years later at a Spirit of the Land conference in Canmore, I had a similar experience where I was filled up with an instruction that came from nowhere I could see or explain that continues to guide me in my choices. I was filled with these questions. Will this help me love the people? And will this help me love the land? I hold these as the foundation of what it means to begin to be a good neighbor, and I am working hard to live into them. Welcome to Westwood, this morning, this day, and this opportunity to be together in community. My name is Alara Stefanyikadet, and my pronouns are they and them. 
Our beloved Reverend Ann Barker and I will be your service leaders this morning. At Westwood, we consider our purpose in the world to being a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all people to rest, grow, and serve the world. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we come together each week to learn more about what it means to be human. We're not here because we've figured out life's questions or because we think we've got it right. We come here to learn more about being in relationship together, how to listen, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, how to create trust and compassion in one another, and how to celebrate our differences together. Thank you for showing up from wherever you may be to spend time with our community this morning. You are welcome here. Anne and I are really excited to share this morning's service with all of you. She'll be explaining in greater depth the sources of our gratitude piece in a moment, but I wanted to take a moment to express my own gratitude for Robin Wall Kimmerer. Robin is the author of Braiding Sweetgrass, the book that introduced me to one version of the piece this morning service is built around. We also extend our gratitude to our musicians this morning, Jacqueline Willette and Rebecca Peterson Patterson, and to our tech support offered by Bill Lee and myself. All of our volunteers at Westwood are deeply appreciated. So please keep your Zoom window muted while we lift our voices in song led by Rebecca. And this is number 1003 in Singing the Journey, Where Do We Come From? This morning's chalice lighting words are an excerpt on gratitude from Robin Wall Kimberer's Braiding Sweetgrass, which you can see on this slide. Our old farm is within the ancestral homelands of the Onondaga Nation, and their reserve lies a few ridges to the west of my hilltop. There, just like on my side of the ridge, school buses discharge a herd of kids who run even after the bus monitors bark, walk! At Onan, but at Onondaga, the flag flying outside the entrance is purple and white, depicting the Hiawatha wampum belt, the symbol of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. With bright backpacks too big for their little shoulders, the kids stream in through doors painted the traditional Haudenosaunee purple under the words Nyawenkes Ganon, a greeting of health and peace. Black-haired children run around the atrium in circles, through sun shafts, over clan symbols etched on the slate floor. Here, the school week begins and ends, not with the Pledge of Allegiance, but with the Thanksgiving Address, a river of words as old as the people themselves, known more accurately in the Onondaga language as the words that come before all else. This ancient order of protocol sets gratitude as the highest priority. The gratitude is directed straight to the ones who share their gifts with the world. 
All the classes stand together in the atrium, and one grade each week has responsibility for the oratory. Together, in a language older than English, they begin their recitation. It is said that the people were instructed to stand and offer these words whenever they gathered, gathered, no matter how many or how few, before anything else was done. In this ritual, their teachers remind them every day, beginning with where our feet first touch the earth, we send greetings and thanks to all members of the natural world. We light our chalices this morning, beginning with where our feet first touch the earth, sending greetings and thanks to all members of the natural world. Author Elizabeth Gilbert describes the book Braiding Sweetgrass as a hymn of love to the world. Lisa Stein and Alara have chosen this book as the topic of the auction sermon, a choice they purchased at the Westwood fundraiser, but this is not that service. That will come in February. Today, because it is Thanksgiving weekend, we are sharing the Thanksgiving address found in the chapter called Allegiance to Gratitude. And in a beautiful synchronicity, we learned on Friday that it turned out Temple Beth Ora also used this reading for their Thanksgiving Shabbat on Friday. All the ways we're connected. Kimmerer introduces it this way. The actual wording of the Thanksgiving address varies with the speaker. This text is the widely publicized version of John Stokes and Kana Wahinton, 1993. She goes on to say, the address is sometimes mistakenly viewed as a prayer, but the elders at Onondaga teach otherwise, that the address is far more than a pledge, a prayer, or a poem alone. I'm told that the Thanksgiving address is at heart an invocation of gratitude, but it is also a material scientific inventory of the natural world. Another name for the oration is greeting and thanks to the natural world. It is a lesson in native science. It is by its very nature of greetings to all who sustain us long. Part of its power surely rests in the length of time it takes to send greetings and thanks to so many. The listeners reciprocate the gift with the speak of the speaker's words with their attention and by putting their minds to the place where the minds meet where gathered minds meet. You could be passive and just let the words and the time flow by, but each call asks for the response. Now our minds are one. You have to concentrate. You have to give yourself to the listening. That's the end of Robin's words. So like generations before us, Elara and I will share the Thanksgiving address with you by speaking it aloud, section by section, and the words will be in front of you slide by slide on your screen. One of us will read each section. The first one, for example, is the people. And then the other will read the response. And our response is, and together the people reply, now our minds are one. The calls are interspersed with an abundance of music and some of our traditional Westwood ritual elements and with some questions for reflection. There is no sermon hiding in here. The Thanksgiving address is the center of this service. Following tradition, we ask you to also say that last line of each section, all of us together. Now our minds are one. Please join in with your volume muted, but your voice out loud wherever you are so that we are sharing the ritual as it was gifted and intended. So when one of us reads, and together the people reply, we will all say together, now our minds are one. The people. Today we have gathered, and when we look upon the faces around us, we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now, let us bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. And together the people reply, now 
our minds are one. Each week we share our joys and concerns with one another. It brings us together as a community, lifting each other up in celebration of our joys and holding one another in gentleness in our concerns. This Thanksgiving Sunday, we are adding our gratitudes. Please type your joys, concerns, and gratitudes into the chat while Jacqueline plays. The Earth Mother. We are thankful to our mother, the Earth, for she gives us everything that we need in life. She supports our feet as we walk upon her. It gives us joy that she still continues to care for us, just as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send thanksgiving, love, and respect. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We give thanks to all of the waters of the world for quenching our thirst, for providing strength and nurturing life for all beings. We know its power in many forms, waterfalls and rain, mists and streams, rivers and oceans, snow and ice. We are grateful that the waters are still here and meeting their responsibility to the rest of creation. Can we agree that water is important to our lives and bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to the water? And together the people reply, now our minds are one. So this morning, we decided to have a few questions to reflect on in the chat. Uh, but this one is just a simple reflection for you to ponder. What does this blue green planet mean to you? Please use these next two minutes to reflect on your gratitude for the Earth Mother and for the waters.
Now we turn toward the vast field of plant life. As far as the eye can see, the plants grow, working many wonders. They sustain many life forms. With our minds gathered together, we give thanks and look forward to seeing plant life for many generations to come. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. When we look about us, we see that the berries are still here, providing us with delicious foods. The leader of the berries are still here, providing us with delicious foods. The leader of the berries is the strawberry, the first to ripen in the spring. Can we agree that we are grateful that the berries are with us in the world and send our thanksgiving love and respect to the berries? And together the people reply, now our minds are one. With one mind, we honor and thank all the food plants we harvest from the garden, especially the three sisters who feed the people with such abundance. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and fruit have helped the people survive. Many other living things draw strength from them as well. We gather together in our minds all the plant foods and send them a greeting and thanks. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. Now we turn to the medicine herbs of the world. From the beginning, they were instructed to take away sickness. They are always waiting and ready to heal us. We are so happy that there are still among us those special few who remember how to use the plants for healing. With one mind, we send thanksgiving, love, and respect to the medicines and the keeper of the medicines. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. As you read the words and sing along with Jacqueline, the song, Give Thanks, from Singing the Living Tradition, number 69. Standing around us, we see all the trees. The earth has many families of trees who each have their own instructions and uses. Some provide shelter and shade, others fruit and beauty, and many useful gifts. The maple is the leader of the trees to recognize its gift of sugar when the people need it most. Many peoples of the world recognize a tree as a symbol of peace and strength. With one mind, we greet and thank the tree life. And together the people reply, 
Now our minds are one. We gather our minds together to send our greetings and thanks to all the beautiful life of the world who walk around with us. They have many things to teach us as people. We are grateful that they continue to share their lives with us and hope that it will always be so. Let us put our minds together as one and send our thanks to the animals. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who move and fly about over our heads. The creator gave them the gift of beautiful songs. Each morning they greet the day and with their songs remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. The eagle was chosen to be their leader and to watch over the world. To all the birds from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We turn our thoughts to all of the fish life in the water. They were instructed to cleanse and purify the water. They also give themselves to us as food. We are grateful that they continue to do their duties and we send to the fish our greetings and our thanks. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. The trees, the animals, the birds, the fish, so many wonderful plants and animal beings. Which plants or animals in our interdependent web of existence are you especially grateful for? Please type your answers into the chat while the music plays. We are thankful for the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air and they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help to bring the change of seasons. From the four directions they come, bringing us messages and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. Please join in singing or sit in quiet meditation as Rebecca leads us in meditation on breathing, number 1009 from Singing the Journey. Breathe. 
I breathe in. Breathe in. I'll breathe in. Feel When I breathe out, I'll breathe out. When I breathe in. When I breathe in. Now we turn to the west where our grandfathers, the thunder beings live. With lightning and thundering voices, they bring within them the water that renews life. We bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to our grandfathers, the thunderers. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We now send greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day without fail, he travels the sky from east to west, bringing the light of a new day. He is the source of all the fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We put our minds together and give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the nighttime sky. She is the leader of women all over the world and she governs, governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time and it is the moon who watches over the arrival of children here on earth. Let us gather our thanks for grandmother moon together in a pile layer upon layer of gratitude, and then joyfully fling that pile of thanks high into the night sky that she will know. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our grandmother, the moon. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. We give thanks to the stars who are spread across the sky like jewelry. We see them at night, helping the moon to light the darkness and bringing dew to the gardens and growing things. When we travel at night, they guide us home. With our minds gathered as one, we send greetings and thanks to all the stars. And together the people reply, now, our minds are one. In the spirit of gratitude, we support all the things that we are grateful for, helping to make them sustainable and ensuring their longevity. Ways to contribute to Westwood are listed on your screen. Please join Rebecca in singing, From You I Receive to You I Give. From you I receive to you. We gather our minds to greet and thank the enlightened teachers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, they remind us of the way we were instructed to live as people. With one mind, 
we send greetings and thanks to these caring teachers. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. Which caring teachers have helped you to remember how to live in harmony? Please type your answers into the chat while the music plays. We now turn our thoughts to the creator or great spirit and send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on Mother Earth. For all the love that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks to the creator. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. And now we rest in the instrumental version of meditation on breathing. We have now arrived at the place where we end our words. Of all the things we have named, it is not our intention to leave anything out. If something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send such greetings and thanks in their own way. And together the people reply, now our minds are one. If there's anything you would like to add so that it will not be forgotten, please type your gratitudes into the chat while we sing number 1010, We Give Thanks with Jacqueline. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Thanks for this precious day. 
the educators, our beloved pets, the autumn landscape, all the healthcare workers, for warming fires and wise elders, for being together today and for all the many things you have named or hold in your heart. We hold one another in and all our collective gratitude with tenderness. We dare to believe in a world where there is life and love aplenty and where goodness will prevail. While we extinguish our chalices, we carry the light of remembrance. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. We are so glad you chose to spend this morning together with us. We've come to the end of our service, but not the end of community time. So feel free to unmute and visit. Um, Alara will send out invitations to breakout rooms, but we're a small group too. And if you want to just stay in the center, just say not now and stay here and visit. Thank you for being with us this morning. And thank you, Alara, for this great idea. You're welcome. Yay.